So this is my first video on Ahsoka 10. I've got far enough along in my other projects that I don't mind starting this one now. Plus I've got all the equipment and all the bits and bobs ready to go. So I figured I'd just make this first video just showing you how I get the LEDs inside these lightsabers and basically how to plan for the wiring because you, you, you can't just print it off like you're going to do a normal model because you're going to run into a lot of problems so I'm just going to run through a few of the things that you're going to run into and some of the tools that you're going to need to be able to do this so so you're going to need a couple of files I recommend using the round one and the square one they're the most effective. You're going to need some tweezers, some pliers. Obviously, you're going to need some LEDs. So, there's, so there's lots of different types of LEDs that you can use. But for this model, you're going to need 3mm standard super bright LEDs. I say super bright because there was, that's what they advertised as. But I don't, you know, I don't think they're any brighter than any other LED to be honest with you, but that's what you're going to need, and you want the 12 volt transistor built in. That's kind of important, so you don't just really, you don't just want to buy an LED and wire it up yourself because you might run into some problems along the way. So these tiny little ones, they're easier to get into position, but they're not very bright. So you have to bunch them together or you have to focus them with like a, a 3 millimeter laser focusing lens that you would normally put on a laser diode <coughs> and the other type is just your standard 5 millimeter LED you're also going to need two strips of 3mm light gathering acrylic diode acrylic rod sorry <laughs> uh, diode on the brain um, this is going to be to go inside the lightsaber core so it's going to carry the light down the lightsaber to the end can need a two millimeter piece as well I mean you can use them you can use something else for this if you like but I find it's best just to use a two millimeter piece of acrylic it's easier to keep clean and reuse and a little piece of sponge on the end there which is just normal sponge that's just been super glued on so I, I don't just put a little bit of super glue on the end you sort of you know about one millimetre one and a half millimetre just sort of roll it around in the glue and then squeeze the sponge onto it and then just pull off the chunk and you want to trim it off to be about 3.2 millimetres across there. you're also going to need some guide wire so I normally super glue this onto whichever wire I'm using and this is just to feed the wires through the parts so you can pull them through relatively easy there you go so that's like all the equipment that you're going to need for the oh sorry for the lightsabers you're also going to need some clear varnish. Uh, I use this stuff because it's quick drying and it's by Polyvine. So 15 minutes uh, and you put two to three coats on there inside. So this is also good for a lot of 3D prints. Really. I mean nearly all my transparent prints. This is what I would coat them with and it's also food safe so if you was to print off I don't know why it would but if you did print off a cup or something or a wine glass or something I don't know 
you could actually use it if you've painted it with that. So anyway, if you plan on putting electrics inside your model, you're gonna have to plan for the cables. You're gonna have to add extra holes. You can see here, I've put extra holes at the at the side here. This one because it is a little bit tricky because there's a big sort of crease into the clothing here. And so even on the, I, had, I, I made sure that I did two of some parts just in case. So even on the one that I haven't broke through, you can sort of see the white, the whitening where it stressed it. That's how close you have to be. So you have to be careful when you're doing the sanding part. And the reason why normally you would just put the hole through these joining parts so that it can just join together like that but for some some parts of the model it don't matter what you do it will not put a hole through it so you have to put it next to it so it's you know it's just the way it is so you want to make sure that when you slice the model that you line the holes up correctly so that the cable is just going to feed straight through. So. When you load all these parts into chisel box or you can't really use lighting for this sort of stuff because of the lightsabers you have to hollow the model below one millimeter and you can't do that in lighting so <laughs> can't really do you can't print the lightsabers so and you can't print the hands so when you anyway, so when you slice the model, normally you would orientate the model to keep hide the supports as best as possible, and you won't really care too much whether they're vertical or horizontal. It doesn't matter. But when you're feeding cables through, you have to be able to remove all those supports before you start. So you have to turn it into a completely hollow model. I normally do that by putting holes in these joints and then just sanding through the sanding through. Sometimes we'll hollow out the whole section, which is what I've done on this one. And what this will do is it allow you to sort of stab away at the supports, and then you can use your pliers to pull every. Pull, pull, pull them all out basically. Once you've got all those removed, that's when you want to use your guide wire to feed them, feed the cables into the part. You want to start with the most difficult part, so you don't really want to be putting the wire up through the body and then trying to get it to come out of that little hole there. So you can start with the small hole and pull it through until it comes out the other side and then put some tape on it or if, if you possible tape it to the the model itself so it's not going to come loose or fall out. These are technically temporary so once I've sanded down all the milliport from the holes from the suction because you, you don't want suction on these parts and stuff especially if you're removing a lot of the support so you really you're using minimal minimum supports on the inside of all these parts so if there's suction it's going to cause you a problem so I tend to put quite a few holes on these sort of models so there's like one two three four five and six so six holes for this arm so once this arm's all cleaned up and once all the body, once everything's painted, you would solder these cables on. So, and then you'd use some of this heat wrap stuff to join them up. Don't use insulator tape; it's not going to work. So, it's going to catch on stuff inside, and it's just going to come apart and just ruin your day. So, once you've so anyway, once you've soldered these wires on you would pull this down so once you've got both arms soldered on so you'd have both lightsabers ok 
connected. You would then pull on these cables and pull the wires down into the center. They'll stop about here. Then you want to cut off this extra cable, solder up the positives and negatives together. And that way you're ready to join the top half to the bottom half. And you would, basically it's the same with the legs. So some parts are going to be really difficult to get a cable through, like this one was. It's so difficult that you can't even pull it through. It's it, you know you can't run it through the support here because it, it won't. The model it's it's only about 2.5 millimeters the, the post itself, so you can't. It's about half an inch long, so. You're not gonna, it won't allow you to put a hole through that, so you have to do it here, in like front of the toe. And you have to sort of sand into the main boot, the main hole, so you, I'm not sure, you can't see it here, but if you don't know if you can see the cable moving inside there. So it goes through this hole here, and it comes out into this square, and I basically use the square file to cut a channel so that the cable fits into it and then I pulled it through the top. So I will work on this piece and I'll work on its connecting piece. So it's, it's important that you make sure that all your joints fit together as perfect as possible. So you don't want any big gaps because you're not once everything's painted and you finally put this together you're not going to be able to, be able to fill fill any gaps or fix those gaps so it's important to try and get them all you know now before you start painting so but for like this model this middle section once you've painted everything up you just clip those together glue it in place and I'll just take a few seconds to just run that cable through and then you'll obviously solder these two together so then your midsection will just connect together and then you'll also solder these two connections together there's no other way of doing it really you can't just use one long piece of wire because you can't really If you're going to use an airbrush or you're going to do a paint, a really good paint job, you're not going to be able to get down into all of these gaps and and, and make it all look nice. So you, the only way to do that really is to make sure that everything fits together really, really smooth, really, really tight. There's no no gaps, no 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 crap sticking in or sticking out. The reason why you can't use lights, like I said, you can't hollow past one millimeter and for the saber blades, you have to be able to fit a core inside. If you don't fit a core inside, they're just going to bend. And I've tried filling them with epoxy resin. I've tried two millimeter cores, three millimeter cores, and epoxy resin. Different thicknesses. It, you know, they all just bend, especially solid ones. There's nothing you can do to stop them from warping. You can stand them vertically into polystyrene. I found that's the best way to keep them straight. But even then, they, they, they will still start to curve. So, what I do with these is, the moment I've cured them, so I'll take them, take them off the printer, put them in the wash cure. As soon as I've washed them, I will cure them for about about one and a half minutes standing up in a glass so you want to keep them as vertical as possible and then I just take them sometimes it's still a bit tacky even you want to leave the hole at the top this little hole at the bottom don't worry about that at the moment and just stick them in some polystyrene so that the, the vertical stay vertical and just leave them in the shade somewhere and, and that's it you just want to leave those until you you're about ready to use them and when you when when the time comes that you want to connect them to the lightsaber 
you want to get some of this or any I recommend using this just because I know that it works really well and this is um, polyvine decorators varnish this is their gloss version and basically what that's for is glossing the inside of the saber blade and that is really important because if you don't you won't get much of a glow down the side because the light is just going to pass straight down the acrylic to the end you want the light to sort of bounce around inside so what I'll do is I'll just take my little spongy thing dip that in and then just squish it in and run it all the way to the end and that's why the hole is important because if you don't have the hole there it's like a plunger effect so as you're trying to push down it won't you're trying to compress the air and it just won't it will get down to about here and then it will just force its way back out so you want to push it all the way down until you see a little bit of the varnish squish out of the hole at the end and then just sort of twist it the whole way all the time that you're doing it just sort of twist it and you probably want to once that's been left to dry you want to give it give it like, like it says on the bottom two or three coats when it comes to assembling the acrylic rod try to make sure that you've sanded off the, the, the corners so you're not I don't mean the very tip you want one edge clean at least but the very very the end that you're going to insert into the lightsaber you want to ram that off a little bit otherwise it's going to scratch all the varnish off that you've just painted on the inside so I also use the cores to stop them from bending so so once I've put them in the polystyrene I'll find because even then straight away some of them won't be perfect so I'll find the ones that look the best I will put the core in and I'll leave that in the polystyrene to till I'm ready but even then like this core slightly warped and that's because the, the core that it was left inserted into is slightly warped and it's just because anyone that 3D prints knows that they, 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 they shrink and it contracts so it's got to go some way so. so the lightsaber hand part this one is actually particularly tr particularly tricky <laughs> so because mainly just because it's so thin and by thin I'm meaning so under five millimeters and you've got to fit something that's 2.65 millimeters that's that's actually slipped off the thing there so it's actually bigger I think one second yeah 2.64 so obviously this needs to go inside this when you I normally print the blade and the sabers together so once I've scaled them up to 240% I will hollow them both at 95% accuracy and it's important that you do that because you need it to be all smooth inside not all jaggedy and rough and if and for the lightsaber handle you have to hollow this out to the same settings the same 95% accuracy but you have to do the wall thickness at 0 0.8 so just under a millimeter thick so these walls are really really thin once you've made the hole into the lightsaber you're going to use you need to use the round file to basically make the hole big enough to be able to fit the LED so you, I use I normally just keep testing it until the LED can fit inside there basically you need to do the next stage without touching 
the circle. So take the square chisel, the square file, sorry, and you're going to want to keep chipping away inside. So like at the moment I can see this file where it comes to here. And you can't just do one straight line through it. That doesn't work. You have to channel the whole part. So you have to just sort of keep angling it until you've cleaned out the whole thing down to about here. Once you've done that, it will enable you to slide the cables down and fit the, the resistor and this heat shrink stuff. Now, I took these off because I desoldered one and it doesn't work. When you try and put it inside it, it will crumple. You also can't, you've got to have the heat shrink to stop them making contact. So the resistor and the heat shrink is basically what strengthens this LED enough to be able to be forced down inside this lightsaber and it, and it does take some force. You can put a little bit of, I use the same grease that I use on my printer rails. So I just put a little bit on there and it makes it a little bit easier to sort of get in there. But I'm not going to lie, it's not, it's not, it's not easy. What's harder is the other side. So depending on which orientation you want the lightsabers to be in is how difficult it's going to be. So if you keep if you print the original hand with them with both with both lightsabers swept back, you're going to need to send the cable down the lightsaber and then hook it straight back on itself. So Either method you have to make an old, a big hole for your cables. So I'd like to say, I normally just in, start enlarging these small holes that you made for drainage and for suction. Once I've made a big enough hole, before you feed the cable down inside, you want to kink it. You see these these are still still bent from where I've used it. So bend it round so it's like that and then feed them through on top of each other like that like so. so. And feed them down inside. And what's gonna happen is they're gonna hit this wall, hit the back of the hand, and it's gonna loop it, it's gonna force its so it's going to force them to bend over and lean backwards. Then you just have to just keep sort of jigging the cable until you can get them close enough that you can get them with a pair of pliers and pull one out. You're best off just doing one at a time. Don't try and go for both of them. To be honest with you, I don't think you're going to be, you'll be, you won't get both of them. Yeah. But obviously because these have been hollowed out so thin, these are, are quite fragile. So before you connect this to the arm, you want to mix up a bit of two-part epoxy resin and just pour it into the model. So make sure that you've obviously filled all your, your suction and drainage holes and then just just pour it in fill it up and then just leave this to sit overnight make sure before you put the resin in make sure that you've glued these cables out of the way I normally just use a, a tiny dab of super glue on a um, barbecue skewer so I just put a little dab somewhere to hold them in the right place because you don't want it to set in the wrong place and then I'll just leave that resin to dry and what that's going to do is basically just going to turn it into a solid epoxy resin piece and you don't have to worry about these breaking or snapping I say you don't have to do that but when you've got a lightsaber attached to the end of this it, it really don't take much to bash it and it at 0.8 millimeters it will crack. I've also noticed that 
for some reason Elegoo resin and any cubic resin, doesn't really matter which one you use, can turn brittle. Like, really brittle. And I don't know what causes that, but I've noticed that a few of these have started to go like that. So, it could be just a one-off, like I say, not out of all of those sabers that's the only one that's gone brittle like that but you know you don't want to paint a model up that's took this much time and effort and then it snaps <laughs> so yeah so that's most of the basics there when it comes to blowing it up scaling up the model rather you can scale it up as big as you like but you can only scale it up as as big as your biggest part basically so the biggest part of this model is obviously the base section so if i scaled this up to 240 percent it, it would you know it would never fit on a mono x or an elegoo satin so obviously i cut it in half and then once i Cut it in half. I had to put an extra slice along this edge here. So there's an extra piece taken off. So once it was made into three pieces, each one of these pieces is the maximum build volume for that printer. So this is the maximum build volume for the Mono X, and then this one's the maximum build volume for the Elegoo Saturn. So unless you're going to start chopping it into like 10 pieces or something stupid the maximum you're going to get is 240 percent which will bring this model to about between 18 and 20 inches tall also the head it only just fits on the build plate with supports at 240 percent so what i normally do is i would normally just select all the files, all the STL files that you download, drag them all straight over to Chitterbox and just drop the whole lot in. And then just look at all the parts, find out which one's the biggest part and how you're going to deal with it. Is it a part that can be cut? Because some parts can't be cut, if that makes sense. Like, if this was the biggest part and you want to run a, a cut through this, it's not going to work. The only way it possibly work is possibly cutting it straight through the middle there. And it's going to make a mess. You're never going to get all these details to line up perfect. And when you sand it and get in it, it's just going to make a mess basically. So, like I say, I started a few projects and then you come along, you come across a part that you just can't run up. A cut through. There is other software out there that will allow you to cut from polygon to polygon, but it was, I'll be honest, I, it was too complicated for me to deal with. So for me, if I can't do it on mesh mixer, then you know, game over. But you shouldn't really have any problems. Like I said, once you've got the scaling thing sorted out, just try and make sure that you print all the parts that are going to have cables vertically so if i had printed this part like that which would have been fine you could have just smoothed off some of the support areas here and it would have been finished two and a half hours faster than say that but the supports are going to get in the way of your cables and you, you just not it's not going to happen basically so by doing it this way, any supports that are on the inside, they're just running vertical. So they won't bother your cable at all. So you can just put that cable straight through. So that's more or less it for this video. Like, uh, I'll just show you this as another example just quickly of what you can do with some LEDs. So this is the 
dead samurai that I'm walk, working on. I've just given it this coat of black just to show you, show you guys this. So, bit of a sneak peek. Maybe that's it. Excuse me, because I have to hold it all myself. And I'm not just stopping there either. What I've done is I've reprinted his hand and his body so that I can run a micro LED in blue. So one of these LEDs, but it's slightly different because it's, it's what no, what you call it's an RGB LED. Instead of having two cords, it's got four. And depending on which ones you put the battery on is whether or not it's going to light up red, blue or green. This has got a kink on the end so I'm probably not going to be able to get it to go down all the way. But oh, there we go. So the wire is now just the, obviously I'm going to make this hole slightly bigger but there's a, basically I've made sure that there's a channel that the cable can go down so that I can feed it through and pull the micro LED and then what I'm going to do is put something in his hand so like a blue flame so the LED will go inside the blue flame and then that will sort of sit in his hand so instead of him just looking at a, a plain hand He'll have these blue eyes and looking at a blue glowing flame. This flame's probably a little bit too big. I printed out loads of different sizes. I mean, this is just a different model for something else that I'm just like making this up as I go along right there. I just thought it looked a bit boring. So this is a slightly smaller flame, which is probably better. So I'm not actually just going to use one of these 3D printed parts either. What I'm going to do is use Milliput to build this up a little bit so that I've sculpted it and I'm going to probably do a few more wisps so it's coming through his fingers a little bit more. And then I've got some silicon coming tomorrow to make some silicon moulds. And I will make an impression of this and then I will cast it out of epoxy resin and I will use all swirls of different shades of blue. So there will be some clearer areas in basically to make, try and make it look like a more of a natural flame. I might even put a ball inside the flame which I will then leave as a transparent area or rather than do a flame I might do a ball so I just made these out of milliput so that I can cast the mold and I'm going to see which one looks the best so I've also got a rock which I basically went outside and got. So, so this is a rock from my Dorf Taylor model which is basically just a rock from my garden which I painted. I just popped it on a stick and airbrushed it the same as everything else. But I think maybe a rock could also look good. So like a transparent rock that's glowing and just giving off this glow and then you've obviously got him just looking at this glowing rock with his glowing eyes yeah. on a snowy background. Yeah. I think I've got Game of Thrones in my head or something. <laughs> but, I don't know. thought it was something to try. You know, might not work, might work, who knows. But, yeah. That's my how to use LEDs video. So, Obviously I'll be making more videos on this build and on the Samurai build 
I've also got some videos coming on the Mandalorian, so which the Mandalorian is more more or less in the finishing up stages. I'm just doing some rusting, so I've got some rusting videos coming up showing that how I do the rusting and the weathering, and that's the Mandalorian out of the way. Um, Carnage is like literally 98% complete, so I'll probably finish him off in the next week or so. And then I've got the aliens build to do. <laughs> and then I've got a giant Batman model where he's in like some kind of a mech suit that looks absolutely friggin' awesome. I also just purchased the Flash and another aliens model, which is huge. It's got like all the eggs on it and everything, so and the, the face hook is running around. I might do the eggs opening up with that green aliens glow from the DVD covers. So yeah. I might even be able to add smoky atmosphere coming out of the, the bottom so sort of dry ice effect. Who knows? We'll see when the time comes. Thanks for watching.